Well, based on the last time you saw me do anything on the big six acre yard project, you would probably think this is archival footage, but no, it is not. This is Friday, October 25th. And the last time I was down at that job was October 11th. So it's been a solid two weeks since I even took anything out of the bed of my truck. And I'm feeling long overdue for some progress here. If you'll notice, there's still straw stuck to the truck from when we spread straw in the rain in the last part of September. So I've been way behind, life is busy, but that's beside the point. I didn't feel like there was any closure to the big six acre yard project. So I'm gonna take you down there and show you my last couple days that I worked and how I, how I ended that. We'll check in on the F750 because there's been a lot of progress there. And, and I think you'll be excited to see how that looks. I'm gonna talk about some changes that I made from what I thought I was gonna do on the F750. And then hopefully we'll get things ready here to begin the next project because that thing is patiently waiting too. All right, I'd better get busy. Time for a wash for this, even though it is finally raining, but I'll take the rain. Dig dry, DIY. So we seeded the big six acre yard job in the last weeks of September. And we got it in right as it literally started to rain on us and we got rained out, but that rain was great. It was enough to keep the soil moist for a solid week. And most of the grass seed came up and we got a pretty good stand, but there were some light spots and some areas that got washed out a little bit. And so I wanted to fix that up. The swale that I had cut along the driveway wasn't perfect and caused some drown outs. So I wanted to rework that. And I just needed to go down there and button things up and get the last of my equipment home. So on October 11th, I headed down there to do a final and they were calling for rain the next day. So I thought maybe if I could get this last bit of seating done, we'd get another rain and get lucky. I don't know, it always still looks good to see it from the road. That's not looking too bad and better all the time. All right, so what I've done is I've walked all the way down the swale and I've checked grade. And I like to put numbers on the ground as you go up and down the grade stick, because that way you can revisit it and see exactly what's going on. And through that, I determined a few places that had some high spots and I found the low holes too. So if I steal a little bit of dirt from all the high spots and carry it to where it's low, I should have a better chance of getting this all drained. Right now there's plenty of fall to where, to where it will drain, but it'll probably puddle up again a little bit. Once there's grass and vegetation growing here, it won't be nearly as bad. So I got that whole swale graded up pretty good now. I'm gonna seed that with the cedar. And I also touched up this here because it had eroded and then the deer walked through there as well. We've got these little bit of areas of erosion. This hair isn't too bad. I think I'll try to touch that up with a rake. That proved to be way too hard to rake it, but I set the rippers down and worked up some loose dirt. And it looks like I tore out that grass, but it'll come back through there. See if we can drag up some of that dirt, all the dirt washed down there. So maybe I can pull some of it up here, fill in that wash a little bit. It may wash again. Got rid of those erosion lines. So I'm gonna try to put the cedar back on the 755, but I wasn't very smart when I loaded it. I got a little bit of an issue because I don't know how I'm gonna get the tractor on a trailer. Maybe I can find, find something to fix that. I think I see some ramps. clean this out once but I guess I'll clean it out again <laughs> so the rollers on the front of this cedar can be angled so that they're more aggressive and they churn up the dirt a little bit I'm gonna leave them angled to do the the swale along the driveway because I want to kind of work up that dirt and then I think I'm gonna straighten them up to do that part over there I'm gonna see if I can move those front rollers so that I can work in the grass and not feel like I'm gonna tear it up. I think this is my giant lever. Yeah. That looks straight now. Let's 
going about as fast as I could, but I've got all the double seating done with the cedar that I wanted to do. And now out here, this has got a pretty good stand, but I feel like it's just a little light. So I'm gonna broadcast what seed I had left on with this broadcast spreader. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it feels like I should do it since the weather's good and they're calling for rain. And that might just help improve the stand just enough to make it look beautiful in the spring. I think it would look good as it is, but this might help just top it off that little bit. So we're gonna see how this works. I've never spread grass seed with it before, but. about 50 pounds to go. I got everything reseeded, overseeded, and I'm out of seed, but I've only got a little bit of daylight. I'm gonna try to get all this stuff loaded up. I'll catch up with you back at the shop and we'll We'll see how things went. Well, it looks like everything stayed on for the ride home. So, you know, that could quite possibly be my last trip home. If the weather hits right and we get the rain and the seed comes up, we could be done. We could be completely done. All right, this is gonna be my most recent update and probably last update, unless it rains a bunch more, but it's currently October 23rd. And I just happen to be down this way for work and stopped in to take a look. It's looking still dark green and it's still looking strong, but we haven't had rain the entire month of October. So it hasn't rained at all since I overseeded it about 10 or 12 days ago. So none of that has any chance to germinate. We're just waiting. Six acres is obviously a lot to irrigate. So they haven't really been able to water a bunch of this. You know, the areas that had grass are, are still filling in, they're coming back, but none of that has grown either. So this is what it is until we get another rain. And then it'll be interesting to see what happens because if this would get a rain, a nice rain or two, what's here is just gonna explode. It's doing really well for very what little rain we've had. And even though there are some thin spots, there's grass everywhere. So I'm optimistic that this will still turn out nice for them. There was a lot of discussion in the comments about the choice to use straw, and we had hoped to straw more of it than what we did actually, but we did put 80 bales down behind the house. And I gotta tell you, the area that got straw looks better. You can see for yourself. It's hard to refute the value of the straw here. You can see the exact line where there wasn't any straw. The straw kind of ended right here. Now I guess there was some straw there, but that might be the woods effect too. See this line here? This is where the straw was heavier for sure. So definitely the straw captured and maintained more moisture. But this here back, the backyard looks great. How's behind the barn look? Now this didn't get any straw, but this was, this dirt was kind of rough. That's coming. This gets plenty of sunshine and heat. And this seems to be growing well. Head straw. I don't know how you argue with this. The straw seem to have made this grass grow the best. Let's go out front and I'll show you out there. This area needs watered too. I reseeded all that. Just waiting on a rain. Waiting on a rain. So if you've been following along on this journey of the F750, hopefully you've understood my struggle in trying to determine a color scheme. I've had a couple black dump trucks and I always thought that I liked the black dump trucks, but that the, one, the ones that I had were one tons. They were easy to wash. My intention was always to paint the dump truck black. I bought a black pickup truck in anticipation of painting the F750 black and putting the red, orange, and yellow stripe on the side like I had told so many I was gonna do. And that's what I had really fully intended to do until I spent some time with a black truck every day. And a lot of viewers commented on that and I kind of knew that to be true, but it really sank in that it was going to be difficult to wash a larger dump truck. 
and I don't know if I have the kind of time it takes to keep it looking great. So my mind started to change towards a different color scheme. I talked about white or the off-white that's on a lot of the old Fords, like a Bronco. And that was a good idea too. I kind of like that, but then John, who's painting the truck, pointed out that white is the first to show rust as it comes back through. That's a valid point too. So then I got to thinking. I do that once in a while. The Bronco is the vehicle I've had around here the longest. And I was always going to paint it to match the dump trucks. I was gonna paint it black and put the, the orange retro stripes on it. But then I got to thinking as I went through some old footage of it, it's gonna be hard to tell that if I repaint the Bronco to look different, it's gonna be hard to recognize it as the same Bronco that I had 30 years ago. And I don't wanna lose that. I want the Bronco to look the same, or at least close to the same. At least so people will know that, hey, that's the Bronco he had when he was a kid and he still got it as a middle-aged guy. So I got to thinking, maybe that's my brand. I already have silver and black on a lot of stuff. So I was over at the Ford dealership one day and they had a really nice new Ford Explorer sitting close to a newer Ford F-150. And the color on those trucks just really, I don't know, it gave me the fizz, as one famous YouTuber might say. And so when I got that feeling, I thought, maybe I'll paint the Bronco the way I want, keep it traditional, and then put a similar theme on the dump trucks. So that's how I arrived at it, right or wrong. I'm still questioning whether it was the right decision. And one day joking, I told John, because John who's painting the truck kept asking me, what color are you going with? Can you tell me what color? Can I paint your truck? And I couldn't decide. And I said, you know what, John, you should just paint it one day uh, on something we've been talking about. And then when I show up, it'll be what it is. And well, he took that literally. <laughs> oh my God. I guess it is gonna be silver. Oh my gosh, really? Wipe the smile off my face. I'm just walking around going, oh, oh, oh. Wow, that looks good. So, well, they have made a heck of a lot of progress since the last time I was here. I was here a week ago, and this thing was sitting outside in primer, so I'm shocked. I was just in town, so. Nice job, John. It's looking good. All right, well, I'm gonna try to soak it in a little bit and, uh, and I'll report back. Hi, welcome to Mike's. How are you? Good. I got a dirty truck here. Yeah, I'm just gonna give you this little slip here and you're all set to go. We'll get all right. for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, the dump truck is silver and I had a hard, hard time choosing that and I still don't know if it's right. I don't know, what do you think? Everyone keeps trying to reassure me, but there's a lot of work to do on it yet. So I guess they're done with it at the body shop. Like I talked about, it's gonna have the same theme as the Bronco. Maybe this was a bad idea. I gotta figure out tires and rims, that whole deal. But there is a lot to do yet to dress it up the way I want to. So they said it's done. I'm gonna go pick it up, but in the meantime, I got a few things to finish up here in town and then we'll go back home and hopefully somebody will be able to go with me to grab the, the 750 from John's. Well, at least all the straw is gone. Kind of head up where I want it. These metal shelves are on sale for like $124 each after rebate, so I don't know, they got me. They seem like cheap shelving solutions. They're not super heavy, but we're gonna try them out. I'm a sucker for a nice clear tote. So this will be my starter pack for my new shelves. Okay, we gotta get organized. We gotta do a better job, so get some shelves in there, get some parts bins and then I'll feel like I can start something different. Made it back from Menards. I think that's a great buy on them shelves, but if the F-750 is gonna come home today, then I need to clean up. And I think before I do any work on the Bronco, I want some shelves. I want a nice set of shelves where I can put parts, eliminate some of this mess over here. We'll work on that, then we'll go get the dump truck. Well, I'm pretty excited about those shelves. They're gonna look really good, and I'm excited about the amount of stuff I can put on there and try to get organized because I'm gonna need the room because I just got the call. I'm on my way to the paint shop. They're done with it. 
they're ready for me to take it over and do what I need to do. So Kara and I are on our way there right now. And uh, I'm just gonna try to drive it home. But I've already seen it, so I know what it looks like. But I'm, I'm excited for you guys to see what it looks like just in, just in the bare silver. But yet, just keep in mind, there's a lot of work to do yet. We're gonna jazz it up. But I don't know, I'm excited, we're almost there. Here we are. Let's see, where is it? There it is. Ooh, it looks pretty good. Oh, they got the tank all shined up. That looks pretty good. <laughs> what do you know, man? Nothing. Starting on the wrong side, hey. Have you ever met my wife? I haven't. Nice to meet you. So this is Kara, John, John Kara. Make a pass around it? Yeah. All right. I want to go look at it. So it looks like you polish the tanks. Yeah, we cut and polish the tanks and the steps and Oh my gosh. You know, it's Man, this is what I'm talking about. Now it looks a whole lot different than what it did the last time I was yes, here. Yes, yes. <laughs> look at this, Kara. Oh my god, I didn't even know that tank could look like that. Man, oh man, see all the black color just looks so good against there. So how long have you had this project? Uh, since the spring, right? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like I've been working on it forever, but man. Yeah, I guess I forget even the day that we dropped it off. I suppose you know that better than I do. I think it was after, it was probably in August, I think, somewhere around there. Was it? Yeah. So what was the most challenging part of the part of this thing? Uh, just waiting on the color. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly uh, what to yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, right. No, it's, I mean, it was all, it was a good, good, good truck to start with so it turned out yeah. really nice yeah yeah for being what it was i thought it was still pretty solid yet to mm -hmm. boot so yeah. oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. that was the so that was one of our clients brian Foss gave me this step boy that turned out good check this out this rocker and this oh my goodness oh you cleaned the inside too well yeah i can't be sending you home Jeez. in a dirty truck Look, the inside's all clean. I guess that's why it's <laughs> custom trucks and detailing. <laughs> Put this step on right here. Oh, and a handle up there. So that'll be nice. Yes. Well, I'm impressed. It looks turned, really it good. It turned out well. So. Are you ready to be rid of it? I'm, I'm kind of grown fond of it, but <laughs> if you want it back. Well, you'll be seeing a lot more of it probably. Right, so yes. now the, the one thing I wanted to tell viewers because they've been beating you up in the comments. They have, they've been, they've been pretty rough on me. John, every week, he reads all the comments, yeah. you know, on all these big six acre yard videos. And uh, the one thing we keep hearing all the time was, I don't know if this is an even swap. <laughs> one dump truck for six acres of grass. Yeah. So I'm gonna let them know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you off the hook. Are you ready for the next one? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Louie, the triaxle dump truck is coming here as well. And it's gonna get probably the same treatment. So. Not right away. I got to get this up and up and running yeah. first. So he's painting two trucks, and uh, I think that's that's more in balance, probably. Don't you think? Yeah. All right. So I got to do a sideboard, wheels and tires, and then some kind of graphic accent, two tone, a stripe, something. But we'll get there. All right. Well, thanks a ton, bud. Yes, sir. I really, really, really enjoy looking at it. Yeah. So I like that we've got a little bit of a reveal, but there's still a lot more to do. So. You'll have to come back for the next one, but. All right, I'm gonna try to get this home. It's gonna look goofy with just single rear wheels, but, uh, and then see if we can make room for it in the shop. See that F-150 over there is the color of this. That's what inspired it. This is iconic silver and black. Almost home. Made it home. Now I gotta make room for it. <laughs> I'm always thinking about ways that I can improve the space and efficiency and ability to store things in my shop. And I knew that I had wanted shelves along that wall for a long time, but having the motor home in here for the past three years has made it kind of impractical. I've also had some miscellaneous hooks laying around in the shop for years on end that I finally decided to get mounted up and put to use as well. But knowing that the F750 was gonna come home and I didn't want it to sit outside and I already had the Bronco sitting indoors. I knew I was gonna to have to try to move things around and maximize space. So I think by putting the Bronco in perpendicular, that'll give me an area where I can still kind of work on it as time allows, but I can still get the F750 in on a nightly basis. And then there's room over on the side 
to put a tractor or two if need be that'll be easy to get in and out during the winter time. So I think this side of the shop is covered and I still have another door on the opposite side where I can pull my pickup in and out or work on projects on the other side. But it's strange to see the dump truck back in here. It's looking good. I got a lot to show you up close. They did some nice detail, like put some rubberized undercoating along all of the high, high impact surfaces where stone chips always occur. And, but overall, the thing looks good. I'm still, I'm still wavering on the silver. But you know what? I've come to realize that the Bronco would look really good in this silver. It's a little bit of a darker, deeper, rich silver. It's almost got a gray look to it, which is fine because like I said, a lot of things in my brand have turned up gray and silver and black. I even got silver in my beard nowadays. So it seems fitting to me. Another data point is that this style of hoodie is the best selling piece of merchandise at my merch store. And there's a link down below if you're interested in any of that, but I think this looks good. So hopefully that'll look good. And so we'll get this wrapped up. Once it's done, Louis will go in for paint and then we're gonna keep on working on the Bronco throughout the winter. And maybe we'll have three that look alike sitting around here before too long. We got a parade next August I'd really like to be a part of. So that's my goal. In the meantime, I wanna thank you so much for clicking on this video. Make sure you come back for the conclusion of this project. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. YouTube video. Yeah. Whatever give you that idea. Oh, that looks good. Okay, we'll go check out Ellis Channel if you want to see the video. I'll put it right here. Looking good, girls. Bruno's going to feel so much better after having a nice bath. Thank you.